When we're looking at market research, secondary research is one type of research that we can do. And this is using information that already exists. We can look about and find information. This is often called desk research because we can do it from a desk. Now, businesses use it. They use it because it's pretty low cost. Sit at a computer, find some information. You're not bothering to design anything yourself. Sometimes it can be free or sometimes you can pay for it. But in terms of research, it is a relatively low cost item. Also, it's really quite quick and convenient because you don't need to leave your desk. You can find some information out in a couple of hours or even if it took you a couple of days, it's still really quick in market research time. And you can use it so it can direct further research that you do. So you find out some information and then you go away and create your own research from that. So secondary research is a really good idea. However, of course, you need to bear in mind that the information already exists. So it hasn't been collected to answer the question that you want. So you need to bear that in mind. It might not really be in the format that you need it. Also, because it already exists, it's going to be out of date. Now, it could be out of date by um, a few months. It could be out of date by several years, like the last census was done in 2011. That's seven years ago. You need to bear that in mind and think, is this research valid? And it might be biased. It might not be something you can rely on. It might be a newspaper that's written an article and it's sponsored by an industry. It could be some research which is done on very few people. So you need to be very cautious about using information that already exists. There are different sources of secondary research and we're just going to have a look at a few major ones that businesses use. The first one is the census, which is the um, every decade the government asks about how many people live in the live in a country, how old you are, are you married, how many people you live in your household, what religion are you, how many cars do you have, and they put this together and it's freely available on the internet. So what this means is that businesses are able to see how many people live in a particular area and what age they are. So they're able to use some rough ideas about how many people will be in their target market. So the census, free, sort of out of date, always out of date, but has a really good statistical significance because so many people fill it in. We've also got internal sales data. Now, the great thing about internal sales data is only the business which has it, has it. Census, everyone has it. Internal sales data, so we've got Amazon there. Amazon know what we have bought from Amazon. They don't share that information with any other business, but it will tell them what we've looked at on their website, what we've then gone on to buy, what we have reordered, re what offers they've sent us, and whether we respond to it. It's a really, really useful part piece of secondary research. The club card, similarly, records everything that you have bought at Tesco's if you use it in that way. And also when you sign up for it, they ask about your age and your gender. So they know quite a lot about us and they're able to track what works and what doesn't work and what sells and how we react. So that's an amazing piece of secondary research and it's only for the business. Well, we have competition research. We can find out a lot about the competition just by sitting on a computer. I can go on their websites. I can look at their reviews online. I can find out what they sell, how much it is, what new promotions they've got going on. Really good way to keep up to date with what's going on. Market reports. Now, these are things which are written by businesses to say, oh, is the clothes market in the UK growing, shrinking? Um, is the chewing gum market, what's the particular trends in the chewing gum market? Now you can buy these reports. They usually cost about a couple of thousand pounds each, which for a big business, if I was Wrigley's, I would definitely be buying the chewing gum report for the UK. So market reports, a yeah, couple of thousand quid, but well worth spending if you're a big business. And newspaper articles, if you read newspapers, magazines, or at various websites, you'll find out lots of information that you might be able to understand about your products and the market you're in. And basically, anything else you can find out on the internet. There is a huge amount of secondary research out there now. 
some ways it's quite hard to sift it through. But bearing in mind the downside of this, it might be out of date, it might be biased, and it's certainly not answering the question you set out for. It's just there. Thank you.